to talk today for a few minutes about something that many people have tried to do, many people would like to be successful at, and many people actually fail at, which is trying to learn a foreign language, especially in adulthood. Many people, for a variety of reasons, would like to be able to go to a foreign country and use a language, and want to learn a foreign language for business purposes, and yet many people find this very, very difficult. And I, my co-author, look at this through the lens of cognitive science. So I'm a cognitive scientist, and for those of you who aren't familiar with that idea, basically we try to bring together research and um, methodologies from across different disciplines to try to uh, leverage um, those disciplines to make insights into uh, problems that people are having, for example, in learning a foreign language. So you can think of cognitive science maybe like an organism with many different parts, so maybe like a starfish that has a number of different arms. So uh, cognitive science would include the fields of anthropology, philosophy, education, artificial intelligence, neuroscience, linguistics, and psychology. I'm trained as a psychologist, but also work across boundaries in linguistics as well. So that's my claim to being a uh, cognitive scientist. So using this lens of cognitive science, what can we learn about how people learn foreign languages and why it is that adults seem to have a great deal of difficulty with something that most children seem to be quite good at. That's one of the things that um, we've explored. And um, we have a book, um, Becoming Fluent, that goes into these issues in much greater detail. I'm only going to talk about a couple of different themes from the book today, but there's much more that you can read about if you're so inclined. So let me just talk about a couple of myths that exist about how people learn languages and how adults should learn foreign languages. And one of these myths is that adults should learn languages in the same way that children learn languages. You'll often hear that, that if you can somehow regress yourself to this very early stage in your life, and people are, are very successful at doing this, that that would actually be uh, a superior way of doing this. And it is true that kids are really good at learning foreign languages. Any child exposed to any language is going to be able to learn it to a very high degree of proficiency. The problem, of course, and you may have noticed this, adults and kids are different. <laughs> They're different in all sorts of ways. And it turns out that the way that children learn languages and the way that adults learn languages are, in fact, different enough that you really can't expect an adult to learn a language in that way. And in fact, we argue it would not even be desirable to do it that way because you would be depriving yourself of many of the strengths you have for learning a foreign language in adulthood. Let me just talk for a moment here about some of the differences between children versus adults in terms of uh, learning a foreign language or even learning a first language. So children have an amazing ability that researchers refer to as fast mapping. This means that a child can be exposed to a concept just once and learn and remember the meaning of that concept. That's really great. <laughs> Unfortunately, adults don't really seem to have that same kind of ability. Most adults require being exposed to the term many, many times before it starts to stick. So kids really do have an exceptional ability to engage in fast mapping that seems to be lost later in life. It's also the case that kids are very good at rote memorization. This is something that children uh, can be, you can expose kids to learning things and they can uh, learn by rote. This, once again, is something that adults are really not very good at. Uh, adults can learn through rote memorization. Most people find it deadly dull and it's not especially effective. It's not a great use of time just to rather keep things over and over again when there are much better, more active uh, techniques you can use for learning a language. It is true that children have an ability that many adults do not have, which is they're able to learn a uh, foreign language with um, native-like accuracy. That is, they can have an accent, they can learn the language without really any kind of trace of an accent. That's very hard for adults to do. It's very difficult to completely master the sounds of a foreign language. Um, in the book, we argued that way too much um, attention is paid to this. It really is true that you probably end up with a very heavy accent learning a foreign language as, as an adult, but guess what? That's perfectly fine. Most of us interact with lots of people who speak English heavily accented, and uh, quite often a foreign accent can be charming or distinguished, so it's not necessarily always a bad thing. Um, people should embrace the fact that they're going to sound like um, uh, a native speaker of that language, and that's really not something that should be seen as being necessarily a, a hugely negative thing. 
And quite frankly, kids have low expectations. They have them of themselves, and we have low expectations of them. If you think about it, kids are not very good, in some respects, using language. They make mistakes all the time. And guess what? They don't care. And we don't care, because what do we know? That kids will eventually figure these things out for themselves. That given time, children will learn the mistakes they make and correct them. But they aren't all that worried about it. They don't have experience the same kind of language anxiety that you and I might experience trying to learn a foreign language. So it really is the case that uh, they're much more relaxed about the entire thing because we're going to expect a whole lot. And nonetheless, the kids ultimately do very, very well at acquiring these additional languages. Now, by contrast, adults bring to the party a whole bunch of things that kids simply don't have because they haven't been in the world learning things previously. So one of the things that adults um, really have that children don't is what's referred to as metacognitive awareness. So adults know how their memory works. Adults know what things are easy to learn, what things are hard to learn. Adults know that you have to rehearse certain things in order to learn them. Little kids have notoriously poor memories. They're really bad at remembering anything. And it went up perfectly fine because little kids have these external memory devices called moms. And mom takes care of all these kinds of things that have to keep track of. And as adults, of course, we're expected to keep our own calendar and our own uh, um, uh, fair straight. And so we learn by trial and error that certain things are easy, certain things are hard. And in that way, we can bring that knowledge, this metacognitive knowledge, to the task of learning a foreign language that kids simply are unable to do in terms of their acquisition. It's also the case that adults, compared to kids, have what's called metalinguistic awareness. So we know a great deal about what language is and how a language works. Once again, little kids have no idea about this. They learn about a language, but they have no idea what grammar is. They have no idea what uh, gender is. They have no idea about any of these things. They just learn the language. But since you've already been through the process of learning your native language, you can leverage this knowledge in order to learn a second language more easily. For example, uh, grammar is something that's really quite complex, and we all learned it very painfully in high school, right? We learned all about how to diagram sentences and parts of speech and like, these kinds of things, and that's really painful and not very much fun. But it turns out that knowing these things can be very, very helpful because you can understand the language and how a foreign language operates at a level that's very different and much more sophisticated than what children are capable of. In a similar way, there are lots of advantages that kids bring to, um, I'm sorry, that adults bring to learning a foreign language by knowing their own language. So if you are an English speaker and are learning, for example, another European language, you already know a lot of vocabulary in this other language. You simply don't know that you don't. So for example, if you're an English speaker learning German, you might learn that the German word for dog is put, which is convenient because English has a word hound, a cognate of the German term that means the same thing. So understanding and realizing the fact that many vocabulary roots and parts are shared across languages can once again be something that you can leverage in order to um, learn le uh, the language more rapidly. It's also the case that adults have a lot of knowledge of the social aspects of language, which clearly children lack and learn very painfully over a period of many years. How to be polite how to be formal versus informal, how to make small talk. These are things you don't have to relearn. These are already concepts you've mastered <coughs> that take kids years to learn. We're always telling kids, you know, what's the magic word, or say please. So kids have to learn this from uh, other people in their environment. But by the time you're an adult learning a formal language, you already understand many of these concepts, and therefore you can leverage that knowledge once again in order to learn a foreign language in a way that's different from how uh, kids learn language. Oops, one more point there. So um, adults typically have high motivation because why would you put yourself through this unless you really were interested in trying to learn a foreign language? And motivation counts for a whole lot. Lots of activities require high degrees of motivation. This is certainly one of them, and that's what adults can bring to this as well. Another myth is that the best teacher of a foreign language is a next speaker of that language. So many people have the idea that I want to learn German from a native speaker of German. 
I want to learn Japanese from a native speaker of Japanese. Why would that be a good thing to do? Well, obviously, the native speaker has a high degree of proficiency in that language. That's obviously the case. And they're going to have an accent, which is going to be ideal. But it's also the case they really can't put themselves in your shoes in uh, the world that you live in where you don't know this language and weren't exposed to it from birth. And the analogy we can make here is to mountain climbing. So you kind of know where the goal is if you're climbing a mountain. It's that high, scary summit. You know, it's going to be a real pain to get up there. But you want to get there, and that's just a learning foreign language. You want to become fluent. You want to have the proficiency. And you're starting out way down here. The problem with learning a foreign language from a native speaker of the language is that they're way up at the top. They started on top of the mountain, right? So they learned their native language early in life, and they did it in this kind of unconscious way, and they have no real way to explain how they learned that foreign language to then translate that and to tell you, the person at the bottom of the mountain, how to climb and ascend that mountain. So in the book, we argue what you really need is kind of like a language Sherpa. So just as a Sherpa might call a mountain, you climb a mountain because he or she has been up the mountain and down many, many times, uh, the Sherpa is going to give you the guidance you need because they have, themselves have done this. So if you're learning, let's say, um, German from somebody who is not a speaker of German, um, but speaks the same language as you do, they can help in all sorts of ways. So for example, sometimes you just need kind of a hint or a little bit of a assistance for dealing with troublesome issues. Sometimes you may need a lot of help. Maybe there are some major issues in the language and you really have to have lots of assistance from your, your language Sherpa. But these are examples of cases in which um, knowing the um, uh, language as a native and then trying to translate that information into the foreign language, that that conscious awareness of how that person's done it before can in fact be extremely helpful. So to summarize, adults really should take advantage of the lifetime of experience they bring to the foreign language learning experience. There's all sorts of skills and knowledge that people can draw upon in ways that children simply can't in order to help them learn a second language later in life. All kinds of other learning experiences can come to the fore here. If you try, for example, to learn to play music later in life, many of that, those kinds of skills can translate to uh, foreign language learning. You learn over time what works for you, and just as importantly, what doesn't. There are all sorts of ways in which people differ in terms of how they learn things, and you at this point in your life, as an adult, know what works for you and what doesn't. People really do differ a great deal in terms of learning styles, some people are morning people, some people are night people, some people are visual thinkers, and it really is the case that being aware of your particular learning styles can help you a great deal in trying to scale the mountain and reach this level of fluency. Thank you.